Hey guys, welcome back to the second video here. Let's continue with modeling our gingerbread man. So, we've got the basic body. Now let's get the details. Let's put the eyes on, the eyebrows, and stuff like that. So, let's make a sphere. Scale it. Whoops. Let's scale it down. And let's change it to a different type of sphere. Let's change it to a tetrahedron. No. Hexahedron, yep, and let's take this down to 9. The reason is because I like having everything as low poly as it can be. Because if you have anything which is, you know, you don't want excess polygons. You want to always, no matter what you're building, you want to keep everything as low as possible. When you can, use hypernodes, and Sphere is a perfect example of this. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make it editable. We're going to grab our points. And we're going to select these points here, and we're going to scale them down, not all the way, just a bit. And then we're going to push them up here, and now we have this object, which isn't, which doesn't look, you know, completely the word, fake. Like it looks like when we attach it, it'll look like it's actually been, you know, pushed on and has a bit of a bevel, so it's more realistic. Uh, also, uh, if you look at this thing. Okay, let's, let's put everything in a hyper mode. Let's hold G. Let's take this. Oops. Take this out of the hyper nerves. Okay, this is body. Eye. Arms. So let's put everything into a hyper node. Holding the Alt key. Click hyper node. Pull out of there. Okay. Now things right now it looks kind of squarish. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get this eye out of the point mode, and we're going to select these points. Hold the shift key, select these points here with the rectangular selection tool, and scale it down. Just scale them in just a bit. And now it's back to being a circle. Again, we have this nice kind of bevel on the edge, which is great. Okay, uh, let's make a symmetry object. Just make it in the middle of the scene. Don't have to hold anything. Just symmetry. There it is down the middle. Drag into the null. Put the eye under it. And now we have two eyes. Now, let's control click and drag this guy. We're going to make an eyebrow. Uh, eyebrow. Let's scale it down a bit. Go to point mode. Select these. Edges here. Let's move them out. Use the knife tool to add a couple more subdivisions. And now let's hold the shift key and click on this bend deformer. And it'll put the bend deformer under the eyebrow. Now you want it to be aligned with the eyebrow object. So you, well, you can press if you're on R14, you can just shift FC, shift C. And then type in PSR and reset PSR. Or in my case, I have tilde X uh, map to it. Basically, you want to, or you just can put, make all these things zero manually. So let's scale it down now. Let's rotate it so the green thing is pointing in the direction of the arrow. Let's go here and let's stretch it out a bit. Move it. Scale it down a bit more. And now. Bend it. But let's turn on heat length. There we go. Eyebrow. And now rotate this guy. Let's scale him down a bit. Now you know what we're doing? We're going to take this bend out and we're going to group these two together, holding a shift key, select both of them, and group them together. Then we can scale the eyebrow without actually affecting the bend deformer. There we go. We have an eyebrow. Move it up a bit. Maybe reduce the bend deformer a bit. Oops. There we go. Wonderful. Oops. And let's group these together. Oops. And now it's symmetrical. We have an eyebrow on both sides. And as you can see, eyebrows are also have this nice bevel because we just copied the eye. So it all works very neatly together. Uh, get this bend and hide it because we 
don't want to see it. No, oh, let's move this. I probably get over. There we go. Hmm. Why is our I not aligned? That's better. Move this back in a bit. The eyebrow still seems to be a bit not the way I want it. Let's just adjust it a bit. There we go. And now they match up. Also, this null here, is this null here. Let's move its axis point down to the middle of the eye. Now we can right here the whole object. Okay, sweet. No, wait, sorry. Still not quite the way I want it. There you go. We have a match. Wonderful. Okay, so next step, mouth. We're going to do the mouth with B spline. And we're going to just click here and then click here and here and here and here and here and here and then click close spline. Now, if you have experience with Illustrator, you'll be better at picking the right amount of points. I think it's a pretty solid amount of points for what we need. Okay, now, while in this view, make a circle. Scale the circle down to the size of this thing, this mouth. Uh, here on the spline, if you go to object mode, you'll see the axis isn't quite in the right place. So just go shift C and center axis 2 and press enter or tilde 4 or if you can't find it go shift F12 and type in center axis 2 and hit execute there or find it in the tools or mesh commands no um, Honestly, it changes with every single version. I do not know where they put all these tools. So I just, whenever I use it, there's a tool that I use, I always go Shift F12 and I attach a shortcut to it. It's just that much easier and time saving. Okay, cool. Now hold it, select the spline, Alt click on the on the sweep nerve here, drag the circle in. Um, probably move the spline, go to the model tool, and move it forward so it's above the face. And there we have it, we have a mouth. The only thing you're going to notice with this mouth is it's really dense. Like if we go to garage shading, you'll see that um, it's really dense. Even if, you know, there's no hypernodes on it. If we go into the object with hypernodes, it's going to be even more dense. So, and I, as I said, I like to keep everything very low poly. You know, so if you turn on hypernodes, everything else is very small. Low poly, this is the thing, is, like it's so dense, you can. It's just black on the screen. So first things first is we select the spline. Now it's like a circle first. And go here to angle. Drag this thing all the way up. And you'll see that it already, if you drag it up to 90, it just becomes a square. But we don't need that. We need like 85 is good, 82. And now as you see the spline as well, you still have a lot of you know edges there which aren't necessary. So once again, let's drag it up. But I'm not really a fan of this adaptive. I prefer uniform. And let's just reduce it. Maybe natural. Yeah, natural. Reduce it to. This is enough. Maybe even too much. Yeah, that's good. And now when we put this into our GMB ginger. Right. Now. And now if we turn on the hypernodes, it's nice and smooth. See, wonderful. Okay, so let's keep moving along. These guys, these guys are going to just copy the eye. We're going to go Control C, Control V. We're going to drop it here, and we're going to scale it down. Then we're going to Control click it. And this one's a bit bigger. The reason they're different sizes is because I like when things are slightly. When you model something for aesthetic, you know, to be aesthetically pleasing, you need to have a bit of variation. Like it's best to add it at the end, but since we're going on reference, we can do it now. It's not a big deal. And let's call this button one, and hit the up arrow, button two, 
and drag them in and under this dbn null. And they get smoothed as well. Wonderful. Now, next step, we have these squiggly things that we need to make. To make these squiggly things, we're once again going to grab our button. Oops. Our button. It's not a hot knives. We need it right now. And just control click and drag them. And let's call it. Just call it belt, I guess. Okay. And this guy we're going to. Actually, no, let's not make the belt. Let's make the arm, the hand thing. Arm. Frosting. Arm frost. There we go. You know the guy over here. Rotate him around. Wait, no. Sorry, my bad. We're not going to use the button. We already have this, actually, so why reinvent the wheel? Let's keep Control C, Control V, the eyebrow. Move it across. Oops. Change the model tool. Move it across. Rotate it. And we already have what we need. And now we can, well, let's scale it down a bit first. Scale it out. Let's go to the point mode. Move these guys around. Rotate this little guy. And as you can see on these squiggles, which as you can see and also in our uh, image here, but actually, they're not uniform. You know, there's like this thicker end and there's a thinner end because when you think about it, when this actually is being made, if it's in real life, like we're not going for photorealism by any you know, stretch of the imagination. But we are. Whenever you do anything, it's good to add like elements which, you know, subconsciously make it feel like it was actually made. And you know, this is like frosting. So when it was squeezed onto it, you know, at the start it's usually a bit bulgier, and when it comes to the end, you kind of squeeze it out and you let it go, and it's like toothpaste. You know. It's, has a little pointy edge on it. So it's good to, you know, don't go too far with it, but it's good to, you know, grab a piece and make this one a bit bigger, and, you know, this one a bit smaller. And it just adds a bit of like flow to, you know, whatever you're working on. So, call this uh, arm2 frost. And now control C, control V, rotate it around, call it arm1 frost. Get into points, rotate it, scale it up, move it around, scale it down, and there we have another arm thing. Now, let's do the set, oh, but keep in mind that these arm objects are kind of offset, so let's copy and paste it and move it to the foot because it's sort of in the right position for the foot. But then let's get these two arm objects and let's move them back so they align with. A slightly indented geometry of the arms. Okay, foot frost. Foot one frost. Do 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 do. Rotate it, align it as we just did before. You know, scale this guy up. Move this guy around. Once again, if you, as I said, I'm using shortcuts. If you don't know what the shortcuts are, just roll over this move scale rotate tool, and at the bottom here, it'll appear what they are. Or you just wait for the pop-up to come up, or you go Shift F12 and you go Move, and you'll find that here go. In my case, shortcut is W. Uh, I switch between these tools with the one, two, three, four keys. Uh, it's something I picked up from Moto I, when I was learning it. I really liked that they have points as one, edges as two, faces as three, and back to model tool as four. So yeah, very convenient little things there. Oops. Rotate this guy over, move him back here. And copy and paste him across. And now, you know, it's all pretty self explanatory, so I'm not going to walk you through too much of this. And now we have the belt, so this two frost. Always keep everything named, it's very important because you're going to really kick yourself if you're later in the scene and you, know, you try to find something and it's not playable. So, belt frosting, move tool, object tool, control click, and let's go points, drag it out, drag this here, rotate it, drag this guy here, drag this guy here, and let's just add some, once again, knife tool in the loop mode, 
cut, a cut, a cut, a cut, a cut, and another cut. And now drag them out. And everything should align nicely. And let's group all of this into LG, the group, frosting. Now, you will notice that right now that I didn't actually, like, logically, if you were planning on animating this, you get these arm frost things and you put them into the symmetry object. But I have a plan for when I actually do rig this guy for you guys. I have a plan to show you how to uh, rig them in such a way that it doesn't matter if these objects are attached to the mesh or not. So anyway, let's turn on the sweep modes. Um, it's nice, but I don't like how flat, it kind of looks more like, let's get one to go straight away. I don't like how it looks more like, I don't know, it looks more like plasticine than, than frosting. So let's select the scale tool. Let's just drag it out a bit. Let's give it a bit more thickness. You know, so actually that's like just all of them. Actually, no, we have to select the arms separate because they're on a different plane. Let's scale them out a bit. Select the two feet frostings. Scale them out a bit. And maybe also these two feet frost. Actually, the, the feet and the belt make sure we're moving a bit. And this is belt frost. There we go. And hey, we got our gingerbread mesh man brush. We have our gingerbread man mesh. Wonderful. Well, as you can see, I don't know, this one, if you like to, you know, I think I'm going to drag these points out a bit more. Select all these top points. I want to make it a bit more squiggly. Or maybe not. Anyway, it's up to you. But remember, the point of this is we turn off the hypernobes and everything is super low poly. So rigging and manipulating this guy, animating this guy is going to be very lightweight on your CPU, on your GPU, and everything else involved. And that's really important when you're doing anything for production. Always try to keep things as simple as possible. So you can just turn off like one object, and your you know everything's going to jump around move quickly and then when you want you can turn it back on and it's render ready nice and smooth and everything so yeah there we go we got our modeling done so in the next part I'll show you how to add materials and light this little guy and we'll have a gingerbread man so I'll see you there